What will you do for us this, this afternoon? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, so I am a photorealist painter. Um, I mainly, as you've all seen, I paint toys and sweets. That's what I'm best known for. Um, I have been doing it for 20 years. So this is my, yeah, I, I graduated from university in 2000. Um, it's, I absolutely love what I do. It's just been such a brilliant, the fact that I, I you know, I've been able to, to pursue my work is just fantastic. I mean, I, I started <coughs> um, painting in oils Hands up if any of you have tried oil paint. Oh, okay, quite a few. So I started using oils when I was about eight years old. Um, in fact, <laughs> I can show you if you come with me. I will show you. This is very exciting. I've never done this from, this is the first time I've done this. <laughs> Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I forget things. I've got everything right here. So, um, I'll show you the first paintings I did. Oh, it just said the internet went. Okay, you're back on again. We can see you. Okay. Um, so, this is my first ever oil painting. <laughs> and I, <laughs> yeah, as I said, I was eight years old. Um, my dad, bless him, he used to buy me all my art materials and he started buying me oil paints. And back then I used to paint from my imagination. <laughs> this is one I did a bit later on. <laughs> I think I was about oh, 10, I think. Yeah. And it was, a, it was like a f fantasy paradise. Um, so yeah, so I've been painting in oils for a long time. Um, it's, I love, I love everything about oil paint. It's the brilliance of the color, which obviously is really important to my work. And I'll show you what I'm actually doing at the moment. So I'm working on these chopper chops. So at the moment, this is still um, underpainting. The, the background and some of this section is now in oils. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to go back to where the internet's a bit better. Just press something. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I, so have any of you done your own versions of my paintings? No. What we've done is a colour analysis. So if you want to show Sarah Graham your colour analysis that you did. The one with the pony on. Hold it up there so you can see. Oh, I can't. It's all right, I'll bring one closer. Yeah, come in a bit closer. I can't quite see. Oh, oh wow! That's brilliant. Oh, that's fantastic. That's something I should do. Because <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, obviously, I there's a lot of there's a lot of color in my work, but you've really identified just how many different colors there are that's fantastic so yeah I mean um I developed my style of painting because when I was so I did my art degree at De Montfort University in Leicester and while I was on my degree I discovered photorealism and it was an artist called Gerhard Richter I'll take you with me again <laughs> Um, he's a German artist and he did photorealism work back in like the 70s. Can you see that portrait of a girl with her head turned away? So that's a painting. Yeah. So 
It's called Betty. It's and it's the first photorealist painting I saw in an art book. And I loved photography. I'd always been into photography, and I loved obviously paint. I loved painting realism. So I discovered photorealism, and that's what I got hooked on. So um, when I was on my degree, I painted portraits of um, my fellow students, and they were very bright and colourful, and there were close-ups of their faces with all their hair and that going out of focus. And um, then when I graduated, I, I got my first studio outside of university and I luckily I got a job in an art gallery and I started selling my work straight away, which was fantastic. But um, I didn't really know what to paint. And my studio, my studio was situated next to an old model toy shop. And in there, they had loads of like old little, they had little boxes of all like Kinder Egg toys and little Pokemon and all sorts of little toys. And I thought, I just got into macro photography, which is, you know, taking close ups with very much in something in focus with a very blurry background. And the toys were perfect subject matter for that. So that's when I started to paint toys and then did that for a little while and then that developed into sweets because who doesn't love sweets? <laughs> and I always, I always, um, yeah, I used, to, I used to work in a shop called Woolworths and I used to work in the pick and mix section. <laughs> so um, yeah, and I, I love my sweets. So it was another subject which like the toys, offered me the chance to really explore colour and be really colourful and make really joyous paintings. Um, so that's what led me on my path to what I am known for painting. But I do, um, it's wrapped up, but I do paint portraits. Um, there's one down there. Of a, it's a friend of mine who's a drag queen that I painted recently. Um, but yeah, mostly, mostly it's it's toys and sweets. Um, and yeah, uh, <laughs> let me think what else is exciting about my career. Um, I'll show you around my studio, okay? So I'll show you where everything begins. So this is my photography room and in it is, as you can see, lots and lots of toys <laughs> and can you see? So there's a carousel horse toy which I love, some Wizard of Oz dolls and then here is my little staging area and I've got my lights and that's that's actually the photo oh hang on I'm trying to see if you can see that's the chopper chops oh, that I set up can you see that yeah yeah, yeah. um <clears throat> for the painting I'm doing at the moment so um oh yeah I have a blackout blind so I can control the lighting um it is a bit of a mess in here. Sorry about that. And there's some very stale cakes in the corner. <laughs> um, I'll show you through here. It's not that exciting, but it's my storage room. There's loads of stuff. <laughs> and then this is, so, let me see. So that's where I paint. You can see all my equipment. Um, I have a lot of brushes. Can you, oh, hang on. Uh, these brushes around here are what I use. See the really big ones? They're, uh, oh, I think I just got paint in my hair. <laughs> I do like to have colour in my hair, as you can see. So yeah, these really big brushes, 
are what I use to paint the blurry backgrounds. Doing this yesterday, and I put all the paint on quite thick, and then I just sweep and sweep and sweep until it's all blended in nicely. Because I don't, um, I don't airbrush. I do everything. Everything's done with brushes. Some people see my work and assume it's been airbrushed, but I do things the hard way. <laughs> um, everything. So once I'm in my photography that room, that's where I come up with my initial photographs. Um, got a few here. It's another one I'm going to do. That's one I've just done. You can see the original. Um, that's one of my, that's my most recent finished painting. It's called Sweet Heaven and it's got a lot going on in it. It's quite, really leads your eye around the canvas. Um, so, yeah, so I start with my initial photograph and then I scale up, so there's the photo, then I scale up onto the canvas by eye. I just do little markers on the edge that correspond just to give some indication, but I like to do it by eye because I like the freedom and I like to make the composition stronger on the canvas even stronger than it is in the photo. Then I sketch out in yellow, first of all, yellow acrylic. That means I can, if I make mistakes, it doesn't really matter. You can't see any of the yellow now, it's all covered up. Then I do a full color acrylic underpainting. So this is all, it's hard to see, it looks finished probably, but this is underpainting. So this will all get repainted in oils. So, so far I've done the background in oils in this top section. And yeah, and then I repaint, so I effectively paint the whole thing twice. Um, I'll show you another underpainting. So this is a Wizard of Oz painting that I've started. So, I don't know if you can see. It's just a little bit looser than my finished work. But it's all the information is there. So it means that when I'm, I'm going to sit down. <laughs> when I'm actually doing my oil painting, I can reference the photograph less and focus on the painting and making that work as a painting. So, so even though I am classed as a photo realist, I'm not, I do want the painting to have a look of their own and not be too slavish, a copy of the photograph. And I always exaggerate colour and light and dark and highlights and reflections and just to make the painting really come alive. So, um, yeah, I think I'm trying to think what else I can add to that. Um, I mean, it's, it's been a really exciting career. I've done, um, I did an album cover. Let me just grab that. <sighs> so in 2012, you probably haven't heard of them. Have you heard of the Kaiser Chiefs? I Anyone? Have, I have Miss Mary <laughs> <laughs> this is a CD. I don't know if, even if you know what CD is anymore, but this is, um, I, I got to do an album cover for a band that I really love. And um, that was really exciting because when I was doing my art degree, I there's an artist called Julian O.P. and he did a fab album cover for a band called Blur. And I just remember thinking, how exciting would it be to do an album for a band one day and um, yeah that opportunity came along and so I'm thrilled that I got to do that, that was really exciting. Um, but yeah I mean 
I've I've done work which has been exhibited around the world and there's work in lots of collections all over the world so um yeah that's my work and my career lovely that, that's brilliant um can we see if we get a couple of questions in now so is that okay yeah yeah oh wow <laughs> Um, so I'm going to ask Mrs. Raw, and Mrs. Raw, you're okay to select a student. And whoever you select, if you can kind of bring them down here, you should be able to hear. Because I get them to come down here so they can hear you, and you can. Yeah. 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 All right then. So we've got two of you, girls. Okay. And if anyone's going to select the way. Um, that's behind me that I just showed you that took five weeks <laughs> yeah um, obviously there's a lot going on in it so there was a lot of um, detailed work uh, rainbow pony didn't take quite so long um, she took about well four weeks yeah a month so um, but I did once do a huge painting of all American sweets and that took me six months. So, <laughs> that was quite there was quite a lot of work in that. But yeah, that's um but sometimes if I'm doing something smaller they just take a, a week or um yeah but yeah on average about a month. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go row by row. Don't forget to introduce yourself. Here you go. Hi. Hi. Um, my question is, who like who inspired you to become an artist? So my main inspiration was my dad and. Sadly, he passed away in 2004, so he never quite got to see um, how far my career has gone, sadly. But um, he basically, I mean, I was drawing figures like age two, and when I was in nursery, te the teachers in nursery were like, Sarah's really good at art. And, and Dad just bought me art materials my sister and I just art materials constantly all through childhood so we we're always creating in that home and yeah he just he was amazing he was so supportive and when I didn't know what to do I didn't know whether to study art at uni or to study I nearly studied psychology and um he was the only one telling me to go um and pursue my art and his advice was always follow your heart and um, so yeah he he was my inspiration and, and still is even though he's not with me he he's the reason I do what I do yeah, thank you <laughs> okay <laughs> So what's, your, what's your biggest piece and what's your smallest piece that you've ever done? Okay, so my biggest painting, um, it was two and a half metres wide. Uh, I'm trying to think how, how I can, uh, I can show you it on my phone. Um, oh, this is the one that took six months. Oh. <laughs> can you see that? It's all American sweets. Um, I probably should have a better way of doing this, but um, this is the biggest painting I've ever done. It doesn't look very big on my phone, but it was a diptych. So it was two canvases 
um, and they were a metre 20 square. So it was, yeah, well, almost two and a half metres wide. Um, that's the most expensive painting as well. And it actually sold for £24,000, <laughs> which is a bit bonkers. The smallest painting I've ever done, um, I'm trying to think, it was about this size. So, yeah, five, about five by seven inches. This is a really old little landscape I did years ago. But um, haven't really ever. I mean, I've done I've done fun paintings, but my oil paintings, yeah, about that size. So yeah, <laughs> that that's it. <laughs> Hi, oh dear, what have you done? <laughs> that looks sorry. Catch that. Yeah, she's just asking, how, how did you get noticed or first noticed with your artwork? Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Um, so I was working, um, so when I graduated, I started working um, in a small studio and I got, managed to get a job in a in an art gallery part time and I was just um, doing local exhibitions. This was in Reading and I was doing exhibitions um, locally in that area and art fairs. I started doing art fairs in London. So it was a really kind of gradual thing. Um, and I'd say what happened was I was working independently, just doing shows in galleries up until 2007. And then in 2007, I signed with the Fine Art Publishers. And that was when I became really like quite well known because um, what happens with the publishers is they produce limited edition prints of your work and they were in galleries all over the UK. And I started to do tours of the UK and I'd have shows in different towns and cities up and down the country. And there was, I mean, when they launched me, because um, they knew that I used to sell sweets in Woolworths for like pennies. So there was this story in the Metro newspaper saying artists goes from selling sweets for pennies to thousands. <laughs> And that was like an article that led to lots of other press and interest. And so really in 2008, that's when my work became really like widely known. And, um, and that's when people started studying me in schools. And um, yeah, it's been like 12 years now that I've been used in schools. And um, I think that's where I'm best known actually <laughs> um for being yeah part of the learning it's um which is pretty awesome so yeah that's a good question thanks <laughs> hope your arm's better <laughs> oh. Nice. <laughs> Hi. Hi. So, um, in your opinion, what would you say is your favourite picture that you have drawn? Um, well, do you know what? I really, Rainbow Pony is one of my favourites, <laughs> one of my favourites ever. I just, um, 
I think she she was actually inspired because I painted her during the first lockdown and um, all the rainbows that were being created to celebrate the NHS, I was like thinking, how could I, what could I paint that would be, you know, in, you know, in honour and inspired by all of those. And um, I got her from a charity shop last year and she's, she's Rainbow Dash, isn't she? You guys will know, yeah. And um, she, she's got the little rainbow on her back. And um, I just thought, it just came to me. It was like, right, let's do her in front of a rainbow. And, you know, I can really exaggerate all the color and make something really dazzling and beautiful. So, and I'm tempted, I'm really tempted to keep her, but um, we'll have to see, I'm not sure. Um, if I can part with her. But yeah, at the moment, I'd say she's my favorite. But there's, there's been lots, well, not lots, there's a few standout paintings over the years that have, one of them was another Dorothy Wizard of Oz painting that I did, because that got exhibited, that was commissioned by Harrods and that got exhibited in Harrods. So that was, I'll show you that on my, <laughs> um, yeah, so maybe Doris, this is Dorothy. You might have seen that one on my website. It's also got another rainbow in it. <laughs> oh, well, it froze there. I hope that was all right. Um, yeah, it's saying, I'm saying my connection's unstable. Um, but yeah, I love rainbows, although I'll tell you some, an interesting fact, I am, I've got a phobia of real rainbows. It's called um, iridophobia and it's a genuine phobia. And when I see an actual rainbow, I get really scared. <laughs> and I get all like, like goosebumps and yeah, I, I can't, I find them hard to look at. So just something weird. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Hello. How many hours a day did you spend on one thing? How many hours a day do I spend painting? Yeah. Oh. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it keeps cutting out. Sorry. Um. So on average, about six hours a day um yeah i have to i have to really sort of pace myself these days i used to work much longer hours every day but um i'm getting old <laughs> and i've got a bit of a dodgy back so um yeah i have to sort of rest halfway through the day and have my lunch and have a little breather but yeah on average it's about well, five, yeah, five to six hours a day. Um, but it's not, so that's when I'm working on a painting. But in between that, I have lots of other jobs to do. So there's, I, I have um, an online shop and I have my prints that I sell and I'll show you all my little, um, so yeah, they're all my little miniature prints that I sell. And then I've got a plan chest here full of um that's one of my can you see that so they're limited edition prints so um they have to be wrapped up and taken to the post office <laughs> and um yeah there's lots there's lots of things and then i have my website that i work on um i have um, you know, I have to do all my own marketing and, um, yeah, there's a lot, a lot more to it. In fact, 
one piece of advice I would give you, if any of you are thinking that you want to be an artist or work in the arts, that if you can do a business studies uh, GCSE, I strongly recommend it because I didn't. And um, yeah, so I've had to sort of learn how to run a business on my own. But um, yeah, so there's, there's, yeah, I've gone on a bit, haven't I? <laughs> initial question but there's lots of work to do it's not all painting sadly hi no hi um, my question is um What's your favourite part about being a artist? What's my favourite part about being a... Um, I get immense satisfaction from when I finish a painting. Um, I, you know, I've, I've desperately wanted to be this sort of artist all my life like when I was younger I, I wanted to recreate I'd recreate cartoons or I'd do drawings of from life and I always wanted to replicate what I saw out there in the world so um you know because obviously it's not for everyone you know realism is its own thing but for me it just it satisfies something deep within me that I can recreate what I see. And I, I think um, actually now it's become much more than that. I'm actually trying to go beyond reality and create things that can't actually exist in the real world because they are too, you know, I take the colour beyond real. what's real. So, um yeah, it, it's 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 just something in me that's always been there. This this desire to um, recreate, um, yeah, what I see and interpret the world around me in that way. So it's hard to explain. It's just yeah, it's just there. <laughs> I hope that's thank you. Okay. <laughs> That's a good question. I need to give that some more thought, actually. Is there any more? Oh, hello. Hi. Why do you choose to plan out your work in paint and not pencil? Um, so, well, interestingly, right up until my GCSE, when I was at school, it was always pencil work and all my GCSE uh, final pieces were done in pencil. But um, when I did my A-levels, I start, I was working only in paint and oils and it's just stuck since then. Um, and it's really naughty of me, I suppose, but I don't, I don't actually draw at all anymore. Um, I mean, even, even if I'm sketching and doing loose, fun little paintings, it's still in acrylics. Um, I did, I actually, I did do some drawings during lockdown, during the first lockdown when I was like stuck at home and I, was, I did a drawing of my boyfriend. And, I, I, and because I'm not, Pract well practiced in it anymore it's just not as good <laughs> and it's kind of frustrating for me because I kind of think oh I wish I could be better um so I just I, I need to spend a bit more time doing it really because I do I do get asked if there's drawings of mine that are available but yeah something I need to do better at <laughs> Hi. I was uh, just wondering, what university did you study art at to become such a an artist? 
Oh, oh thank you. Um, I went to De Montfort University in Leicester um, and it was, it was great. I absolutely loved my time at university. Um, I got to, we, we got to try lots of different, because it was a modular degree and we tried lots of different mediums and practices. So I did a bit of um, sculpture. I did, I did a lot of drawing. I did drawing modules actually on my degree, thinking about it, but in charcoal and life drawing. But my first love and passion was painting. So that's what I focused on in my final year. Um, and yeah, I, I would like to go back to the uni actually one day and um, maybe talk or something, um, meet students because um, yeah, I'm very fond of my time at uni and it helped me a lot. And one, one of the reasons I kind of went into being a practicing artist so quickly was um, I, for our final year, we had a part of the degree, which was called professional practice. And we had to put on an exhibition outside of university. And I had a part-time job in a pub. And above the pub, there were two huge empty floors, which I'd always thought would be a great gallery. And I, I asked the landlord at the brewery if I could turn the pub into an art gallery and they said yes and some of my friend, fellow students and I we we kind of renovated it there were a few missing floorboards and it all had to be painted white but we put on exhibitions there and that's when I started to sell my work um, and yeah it kind of kick-started my career so I owe a lot to my degree really. It gave me the, the impetus to kind of go for it. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I do recommend you do an art degree, like if you do want to go into art, um, because it just, it's a really good foundation um, and it sort of sets you up well. So yeah, I, yeah, that's. <laughs> Have a nice day. Oh, and you. Hi. Hi. Um, so, do you do like, rec like recommendations from people with you are, or do you just like do what you want to do? So, um, I do, t I take commissions. So, um, so for the sweet one um, behind me, which I've called Sweet Heaven, that was a guy who lives in Sydney um, in Australia and he wanted to commission me for years. And he just said he wanted, he's British and he remembers all the sweets that we all had when we were kids. And um, he, that was his brief it was sweets and that was it and that was um gave me lots of room to sort of develop the composition and be quite it was quite free I mean most most of my commissions I've got one coming up which is going to be of these mint favorites and um the guy is buying it for his wife's birthday and we're going to put her favourite ones coming out of the bag and in focus. So, yeah, it kind of depends if I'm doing a commission or not. Um, but it's nice. I mean, I do like, obviously, commissions are good because they are my bread and butter. Um, but sometimes they can be a little bit restrictive but I try to find, I mean, the chopper chops that I'm painting on the easel at the moment, that was, I was really unsure about it because the lady who's commissioning wanted this tall, thin canvas, which I'll show you again. And um, I initially wasn't sure about it. I wasn't sure if it was gonna work, but actually now I'm painting it. I think it works really well with the, the shape of the lollipop and um so so I'm not always right <laughs> um 
and it is nice to sort of explore things that you might not think of. Um, so yeah, so I am open to ideas. Another commission I've got coming up next year is um, a guy wants me to paint him, his and his wife's favorite soft toys that they had when they were children, like side by side. So um, I'm excited about that one because it'll be nice to paint the texture of the soft toys and like the fur and the, um, so yeah, that'll be a good one to do, so. Yeah, that's an excellent question. <laughs> Hi. Hi. My question is, um, if you're doing a soldier, what art would you do? What type? Oh my goodness. Um, wow. Do you know what I would love to be good at? <laughs> um, doing art with spray cans, like big, huge murals and things. Just not necessarily graffiti, because that's not a good thing. <laughs> Always, if it's not in the right place. But I, I do really like the, it's still, it would still be realism. I don't think I could get away from that. But um, I think the way that, spray can artist work is fascinating. I actually was um, part of a, um, <laughs> a graffiti, uh, what do you call it, a jam? <laughs> and um, I was there painting, we, we had these wall, uh, it was underpasses in a town called Stevenage, uh, next door to Hitchin, where I am. And um, yeah, we the council had given us, us all permission to paint these subways and um, there was some amazing graffiti artists from like all over the country and they were just doing the most incredible artwork and there was me trying to paint on this wall badly with spray cans <laughs> and um, painting my Dorothy with the Emerald City in the background and um, yeah I wasn't I wasn't very good <laughs> so I'd love I'd love to have those skills uh, yeah. Okay. That was a good question too. Hi. 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 What advice would you give for beginners? What advice would I give for beginners? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so I get asked this a lot. Um, I think what you need, you need to believe, first of all, you really do need to believe in yourself um, and have a really good work ethic. So right from the start, like I was, I knew that if, you know, I had to really knuckle down, really work on my technique and make, as much art as I could to get it out there in the world. Um, I, I think it's just, it, do you know what? In the very beginning, it really was just hard work and it, and it still is hard work. You know, I work really hard, um, but I, I think you need to have that because you need, you need the self-motivation. Like that's really vital. Like if you, if you haven't got that, it's really difficult. Um, but I would also, I mean, opportunities were, I had some great opportunities like getting a job, a part-time job in an art gallery. I mean, that was just fantastic, but I know it's not that easy. There's not as many galleries out there as there probably could be. Um, but just to try and be involved in the arts in some way. Um, and also, I mean, it can take, it's, I was lucky, like I, I got into it straight after my degree, but I've got friends that, you know, they did to start out in life, they did have to get more regular jobs and just do the artwork in their spare time. And then over time, build that up and then take the jump from that to working as an artist. So, I mean, that's a more, that's actually a more realistic route. And if you do find you have to get 
a regular job when you first come out of university not to be disheartened by that if you've still got a dream to be an artist one day you know if you just make the work as and when you can you can still make that a reality so um yeah I think and practice I mean that's the thing it's like you you just I, I've got where I am today because of lots, <laughs> lots of practice and um, yeah, but also like today there are opportunities that weren't around when I was younger, um, I like, I did, there wasn't, internet only came along while I was doing my degree, so um, yeah, I mean you can have set up websites now, you know, I know young artists that are already set themselves up on Instagram and already selling artwork while they're still you know doing the GCSEs and things so there's lots of opportunities to be quite entrepreneurial so um yeah just get yourself out there really do you do you think you'd like to be an artist okay cool excellent well yeah just just Practice, practice, practice. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Um, Hi. Well, how many paintings would you say you made? Oh my goodness. Um, how many have I painted? In total, my whole career. For like, yeah. <laughs> uh, right. I'd, it's it's hundreds. Um, oh. Yeah, we can still see you. Oh, I can't see you. Uh, okay, we can still see you. We're still going. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, that's truly. Sorry, that's right. Okay. Um, yeah, it's hundreds. I remember there was an exhibition I did um, when I was living in Reading and working at the gallery. I did a hundred little paintings of flowers that were all five by seven inches. And um, yeah, so that was quite, a, there was quite a few that year. I should work this out, shouldn't I? I know I've done over 40 chucka chuck paintings um but i average i average sort of six to ten well six to twelve paintings a year um so but there was a year there were years when i, I did like 18 paintings one year so yeah i'll have to <laughs> i'll have to work that out <laughs> but it's hundreds thank you okay Okay, right then. So, Sarah, I think that's all our questions now. For, uh, okay. Um, so they were, can I just say, they were absolutely brilliant questions. Good to hear that, Yeah, yeah brilliant. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, uh, Bill, can you just um, say to Sarah Brain, you are a big, big fan of you. Okay, so off you go. Bye, Bye. And away we go. Lovely, lovely. Oh, oh, I wish I could see you all. <laughs> My picture's gone. So they give it a big wave. I'm recording this as well, Sarah. So I'll send you a copy of the video. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Thank no you. worries. We can still see you, so that's fine. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. There we are. Right then, so, can I just say, I just want to wish them all the very best, like with their art, and if they do pursue art, just to really enjoy it more than anything else. Like, just you know, art is such a wonderful passion. You know, it's it's a passion for people. So, just um, yeah, enjoy every minute of it, really. Lovely. You hear that, girls? Yeah. yeah. Take that advice on board. That sound advice. 
All right. Well, thank you very much, Sarah, for um, for again meeting us on this Zoom call. It's been absolutely fantastic. The girls are going to really benefit from this. And um, when they get on with further work, I will send some pictures of it your way. Yeah. Yeah, do. Please do. All right, then. Well, thank you very much. Bye -bye. Say bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 B